Vanessa, and I'm welcoming you into my actual kitchen. Uh, I'm going to attempt to make some lip balm, vanilla flavored lip balm, uh, all natural, do it yourself. I uh, have not done this before, but I figured I might as well let you join in to see if I can actually pull this off. Um, and it might be really easy. Or am I not? <laughs> so let's find out and, and take a whack at it. Uh, I will say that I do tend to make my own moisturizers, so I have some experience in DIY cosmetics, but um, not a lot. Let's see how this goes. Uh, so vanilla lip balm seems to be super simple. It basically involves, uh, it does involve cooking, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> but all you need to be able to do is boil water. Uh, so this is my pot of boiling water. I don't own a double boiler, so I just make my own. <laughs> it's boiling away. This is just like a Pyrex kind of dish. Um, this or glass bowls or a measuring cup. Whatever you can find that will not explode uh, is great. <laughs> Obviously not plastic. Um, so I'm gonna just put that in there. Basically, it's just gonna sit like that. I'm gonna dump all the ingredients in there and it'll work, trust me. Uh, so for this lovely experiment, you will need the following ingredients. This is emulsifying wax. It is plant-based, it is all natural. It helps to basically hold oils and waters together and bind things and make everything smooth and nice. Uh, so you can use this or you can use cosmetic grade beeswax pearls. So it's your choice, uh, but this is what I have, so that's what I'm going with. You also need coconut oil because when do you not need coconut oil? kind of like the best because it's sometimes runny, sometimes hard, sometimes in the middle. I feel like it's this kind of oil that's willing to adapt to other oils and I don't know, it's kind of kind of funky how it changes its consistency. But anyway, it's a good kind of in-betweener. Um, you will also need, so that's two teaspoons by the way of coconut oil and one teaspoon of uh, beeswax pearls or emulsifying wax. Uh, and then you need one teaspoon of cocoa butter, which is this little guy. <laughs> it's in a funny shape just because that's the way I've been carving into it. Usually they'll come in big blocks and they're rock hard and they smell like chocolate pretty much. Um, so then you need two teaspoons of almond oil which I'm looking at and realizing I probably only have one teaspoon of. If you're allergic to nuts or you don't like almonds or whatever, just use another carrier oil. So you could use avocado oil, apricot kernel oil, uh, hemp oil, maybe olive oil. I have some apricot kernel oil here, so I'm gonna maybe do one teaspoon of that and one of the almond oil, but it's up to you. Um, and then you want two to four drops of vanilla extract. This, I think I actually, yeah, brought back from Grenada. So there you go. Pure vanilla extract. And now, if you want to add vitamin E, which is just an oil like this, uh, you can also do that. It supposedly is an all-natural preservative. I don't know if I really believe that, but... It's definitely good for you, definitely good for your skin. So give that a whirl if you want. So that's it, basically you wanna melt everything that is not an essential oil. And I don't think there even are any essential oils in this recipe. So melt everything in this bowl, your double boiler. Uh, I would say not the vanilla extract though, maybe leave that out. Um, so instead I'm gonna take my, I've shaved off the cocoa butter here that I want. So I'm gonna kind of scoop it up. This should be one teaspoon, but let me verify. With a proper, ugh, oh my God, that's messy. <laughs> With a proper measuring spoon. Here's my 
official teaspoon of cocoa butter. Ugh, this is kind of messy. Should have really known that. It might get messy in the kitchen when you are making your own meatball, but you know, there's worse things in life to contend with. I always cut, like, sort of shave my cocoa butter off with a knife, and I'm also sure there's probably an easier way to do that. You could probably just treat it like you do Parmesan cheese if you have, like, a cheese grater or something. Uh, so that is my cocoa butter, two teaspoons of almond oil, which is where I run into trouble because I'm running low. Let's see how much we can get. Woo! Okay, we've got one teaspoon of almond oil. And so instead of a second, I'll put a, another teaspoon of apricot kernel oil, just to mix it up. And then we want, oh, sorry, I'm doing that wrong. Hold on. Two teaspoons, oh no, that's right. So then I want two teaspoons of coconut oil. Don't worry. Totally know what I'm doing. That's one teaspoon. And... Okay. Two teaspoons of coconut oil. I think I haven't done my wax, so my computer is freezing. There we go. Uh, one teaspoon of emulsifying wax. Okay. Ah. Okay. I think that's all of the things in there. Get a napkin. I'm covered, I'm covered in oil. Okay. So I think we've done everything. We've got our two teaspoons of almond oil, two teaspoons of coconut oil. Did I put one teaspoon in or two teaspoons? I think I did two. Okay, so <laughs> then one teaspoon of cocoa butter, one teaspoon of emulsifying wax or beeswax. So the only thing left is two to four drops of vanilla extract, which I'm gonna leave until it's cooled down slightly. Um, and then also I have some vitamin E, which I'll probably also put in after it's cooled down slightly because I believe that's an essential oil, maybe. Um, anyway, so this is melting. The last things to melt will be the waxes, obviously, like the uh, emulsifying wax. The cocoa butter is already pretty much dissolved. That's just going to take like one more minute. So the container that you want to put this lip balm in is obviously up to you. Uh, Better not to put it in plastic, I think, but personal choice. So I have glass. It's about this big. This is far bigger than I'm going to need because I'm making a very small amount, <laughs> but it's all I had. So it's a glass jar. It's obviously a good idea to sterilize your glass jars. Um, but when you're not using any water, in your DIY recipe, then you probably can be less concerned about sterilizing. It's a pain in the butt, I know, so. <laughs> anyway, okay, so I think we're all done. I will try to show you how this looks. I'll take this off here. Close that up. Try and bring you. Blah. Well, I don't know if you can really see anything in there. Probably not because all the oils are kind of a clear color. But uh, oh, there is something in there, trust me. So this is going to cool down slightly. You can kind of help it by swirling it around. Obviously putting it on a cool surface or frankly even taking it for a little walk outside because it's freezing. Uh, so once that cools down a little bit you can add your other stuff like your vitamin E. 
and your vanilla extract. Um, other things you can add, chocolate. Um, you could add sort of different fruit extracts. Um, let me see, honey. Honey is good. In fact, maybe I should add honey. Why not? Let's add some honey. Just for kicks. Can't go wrong. Just like a tiny bit. This might be my, this might be my undoing. Okay, if this doesn't work out, then let's blame the honey. Let's just stir that around. It's kind of melting. Yeah, yeah. Get in there, honey. Get in there. I didn't even really measure that amount. That was probably just, I don't know, a bit of honey. <laughs> Not too much. Not too much honey. Okay. We're getting there with the cooling down, I think. So, I'm going to put in my vanilla extract. This is like, I'm only supposed to have like a few drops of this. So, That's fine. This is the problem with me and cooking is that I'm incapable of actually following the recipe. I always go off book and I stop in and comes back to haunt me, but <laughs> what can I say? Okay, so uh, oh yeah, my vitamin E. Because why not? This again is like you don't want too much. Blah. Okay, that's enough. You really don't need a lot of vitamin E or any essential oil, of course. They're potent, potent things. Okay, so I think we're all good. This just needs to cool down a little bit further. You should really wait about 20 minutes, is that right? No, it, that's not right. Allow it to cool slightly and then pour into containers. Then let them sit for 20 minutes with the lids off, and then put the lids on, and you're officially done. So with that, why don't we just pour it into the container? Here we go. I really hope this works out. It smells good. That has to be a good sign. I'm not totally sure my honey melted, but you know, that's my fault. Okay, why don't we try and do this like a proper cooking show. Ready? Ooh. Go, lip balm, go! Ah! Okay. Ugh. So as you can see, it's obviously still looking pretty runny, but it will harden because we used that really hard waxy stuff and cocoa butter and semi firm coconut oil and all that jazz. So it looks super runny, but trust me, this will solidify a bit more. So leaving my cap off, I'm gonna let this sit for 20 minutes and then replace the cap. And obviously that's when I can test it out. I'm guessing if you want to expedite this process, uh, you could probably stick it in the fridge. So maybe I'll do that. Um, and otherwise, I have no idea if it worked. I think it worked. I'm gonna put my finger in it and try it. I think it worked. It feels all right. Hold on. Hmm. You see? You can kind of see. It's glossy. It tastes good. There's a bit of a scent, but it's really not strong at all. Uh, and feels pretty good on my lips, and that's when it's at its most runny. So, anyway. Give it a shot. 
I'll uh, check back later and hopefully this is solidified. Um, but either way, that took 15 minutes from scratch and I do a lot of talking, so probably it'll take you the most time. Uh, so thanks for joining, and make your own lip balm, because why not? <laughs>